Hello everybody and welcome to today's video and in this video I'm going to do a review of this Lichtenite 1000 watt power generator. Actually I don't know why they call it a generator, it's just a lithium battery. Now before I proceed any further, this isn't a sponsored video by Lichtenite, this is purely a product I bought myself. Now I've had this supply since the beginning of December and I primarily bought it for the camper van and to power all my gadgets. So what I'm going to do is go through this review show you all the pros and cons of what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Now, if you go onto Amazon, you will find many, many batteries like this. But what attracted my attention to this particular one was because of the price per watt. Now, as you might find, and I found when I began this search, on average, it's about a pound a watt. And this particular unit is 1000 watts. And most of them came from China and most of them will take two to three weeks to get here. Some of the descriptions were a bit ropey, bad English, and that is a bad sign for me to the quality of the unit. And if I ever needed to return it, that seems a bit iffy. A lot of them weren't actually through Amazon Prime either, so returning them would have been difficult. But I went on to German websites. I came across this unit, which isn't listed in the UK. And the other thing that brought my attention to this unit was price per watt. Now, normally, if you look on at least the UK Amazon, on the Chinese unit, it's costing about an average one pound per watt. Now this is a thousand watts, so that's a thousand pounds. Was This was only 680 pounds after European exchange for the 1,000 watts. And for the one and a half thousand watt unit, same type, it was only 900 pounds. But I didn't go for that unit because of the unit size. The length of the unit increases by another third and I needed to fit it in the van and it also gets pretty heavy. This one's pretty light. So I tried to buy it directly and I couldn't because Amazon have changed their rules. So I contacted Lichtenite and they said, we're set up Amazon UK. So they did that, I managed to get hold of this unit. So let's have a look at the unit. Now on the front of the unit, we have the various outputs. What attracted to me to this unit was the four USB-A ports here and one USB-C port quick charge which I wanted to use for my MacBook. We will come on to that later. We have a 12 volt cigarette lighter. We have two 220 volt AC outputs. As you can see, they're European outputs. That's not a problem here in the UK. I'll just use an adapter. And if we ever go abroad, then we can just use a European plug. Quite versatile. Here we have DC out and of all things which is covered up here, a jumper for a battery. Up here we have the on off switch and then here we can individually control the DC output and the AC output. Around the back we have the cable unit and mains input. So we have this little flap door that comes out so far which is quite neat. Um, the guys at Lichenite actually gave me both a European cable and a 240 volt cable. I've added the Velcro to tidy things up we have the 240 volts in, and we have DC in, and we got a cooling fan. Pretty neat and tidy. Now the only thing I would say is when this cable is plugged in, it would have been nice to have a little slot in here to run the cable through and still shut this door, because this has to remain open, and it looks like it could break quite easily if you just give this a kick. So I might actually cut a slot in here myself, but that's for a later date. But otherwise it packs away nicely. And there you go. Now let me just switch the unit on. And there is a nice color liquid crystal display showing the output wattage. Now, as I found, this is the total between AC and DC at the same time. We have indicators for the AC and DC on off and the battery capacity. So switch on AC, it'll turn from red to white, give you a beep, and now you get AC out, you can switch on DC, and get DC out, you can switch AC off, just use DC out. This should make the unit much more efficient because it doesn't have to do that DC to AC to DC conversion, and that's a really nice feature. Now one of the main motivations for getting this battery was because of my MacBook. This MacBook is a 2018 15 inch and it draws 87 watt. Now I calculated that if this ran flat, I'd be able to charge it about nine, 10 times. That's not counting all the other gadgets that I would try and charge at the same time. So obviously that would decrease. 
So off the grid, I could definitely use my laptop for rendering video for a good few days and nights. Now, as I said, this unit comes with four USB-A ports and one USB-C port quick charge. And of my experience of using USB ports to charge my laptop, they all work nicely. So let me just switch on the unit and show you. Switch on the DC, plug in the USB-C cable. Here the Pong, here the Pong, here the Pong. Now this is the problem. Even though this laptop is charged at 100%, the unit keeps switching on and off. And I believe that's because it's drawing too much current. So even if I shut this laptop down, I keep getting this ponging. So basically, it's not charging the laptop, which is a really a big disappointment. So that means I have to go back to using the power supply. So as you can see here, this is the power supply of the Mac. It's now actually gone down. It's gone from 100% down to 99, which shows that this battery is not charging the laptop through the USB-C port. We can also see here on the display, we're drawing zero watts. Okay, let's stop the racket, the ping pong. I'll just remove the USB-C cable, put it into the end of the max power supply, plug in my UK plug. There you go. Uh, I'll just switch off the DC because I can. I'll switch on the AC. Hear the peep. And we're now charging the laptop through the mains and no repeated ping pong. Now, as you can see here, this is what I expected through the USB-C type port. You can see the wattage being drawn, which is actually quite a nice feature of this. You can see how hard your Mac's working. We'll see how hard I'm rendering video on watts. Now, what I thought would happen the unit, like most USB-C chargers, would just sit there and dribble, charge, not go, that's too much current, switch off. By the way, this is a pure sine wave, so it's not gonna be detrimental to any electronic apparatus being plugged in. One of the good features of the Electronite hanger device, which I liked, was the fact it could also be used as a kind of a UPS. So you can still charge the device and use all its outputs. But as I found when we had a power cut, plug in my Mac Pro. The fan noise on the unit is quite loud. So what I'm gonna do now is just demonstrate that. Here is the UPS power to the Mac and some monitors. The unit is off. Notice how quiet it is in here. Very, very quiet. I'm gonna switch this on. You can see it's all initialized and set up. Now switch on the AC. Watch the wattage. It'll kick in. There you go, the power's gone up. Now, the Mac is off at the moment, and this is the AC current I'm drawing on some subsidiary devices. I'm now gonna switch on the Mac, which I know will take it above that 100 watt limit. And now you can hear the fan noise is actually quite loud. Which is a pity really, because I was hoping to use this maybe as a replacement UPS device should my current UPS die. But that fan is just a teeny bit too loud. Now I've just shut down the Mac, but the other thing you may have noticed is I am pulling more current than I am charging. So the unit has now gone down to 98%, which is not perfect. Now the one thing I did find amusing about this power supply was the user manual. This teeny weeny little user manual. And when I say it's teeny, you need some glasses. Let me show you. So, for instance, this is the layout page. Now I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't read that. So I don't know if I can see that. That is one of the smallest manuals I've ever come across. 
Now I'm having it in use since December, I've had it in the van, fully charged and in temperatures as low as 5 degrees C for two weeks and come back to the unit, the unit still reads 100% so it's nice to know that the battery hasn't deteriorated in that time. So how long does it take to charge this unit? Well, I haven't depleted it completely. It arrived in the box at 66%. I plugged it into the mains and to get to 100% it took two to three hours. So I expect at a campsite, I reckon I could charge most if not all of the battery ready for the next few days off the grid. So all in all, very pleased with the unit. Great price, great guys to deal with at night if you have any problems. Compact, reliable, has the ports that I need. The only slight disappointment is not being able to plug my MacBook Pro in the USB-C port, but that's not the end of the world. I'll plug it in and keep my MacBook charged so I can carry on making videos. I can certainly plug in all the rest of the gadgets at the same time, plus the phones and anything else, and that should keep us going quite happily for a good few days off the grid. Now I'll leave a link to this unit in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you liked it even more, please subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, please add them in, in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. See you guys. Happy van life.